Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we're going to look at the actual definition of what the derivative is. And we're going to see kind of how to use this idea, this new idea we were looking at uh, of limits. How can we use limits in this definition? And to start off, we're going to kind of go back to this idea of tangent lines. And so the question is, if we have a curve, so y equal to f of x, there's, our, there's some curve that we're interested in. And then we have our point of tangency p that we're interested in kind of drawing the tangent line at or finding the tangent line at. The question is, how do we actually do this? Because normally when we find the equate normally when we find a line, we need to know two points that are on the curve. And we've kind of seen how to estimate what the tangent line is. So we know that if we're we have our curve and we have our point of tangency, well, we can kind of draw in what we think the tangent line should look like. It should just kind of barely touch the curve. Um, and if you zoom in, closer and closer to that point of tangency, right around there, the curve and the, the line, it looks like they should be going, they're going in the same direction. They kind of blur together. So we kind of have an idea of how to estimate, draw in what we think the tangent line should look like. But the question is, how do we do that exactly? How do we find the, the tangent line exactly? And so the the construction we're going to use is going to is going to involve some other line and that's what we're seeing on this graph so we have our tangent line here we kind of have the answer already but how do we get this how do we get this exactly so this is our tangent line at point p but what we're going to do instead is we're going to look at this other line called the secant line so it's going to intersect our curve at two points the point that we're interested in, point P, but then there's going to be the second point on our curve that this secant line is going to go through. So we have this secant line connecting points P and Q. So once we have two points, then it's we've seen how to do that. It's it's no problem to figure out what the slope of that line is and then what the equation of the line is. And so the idea that we're going to do, that we're going to use to actually construct our tangent line, is we're going to kind of use this other line. We're going to use this secant line and that's not it. We're going to do something else with that secant line. So what we're going to do is we're going to imagine taking, we're going to keep our point of tangency, that point P, we're going to keep that one fixed. It's going to stay where it is. But what we're going to do with this other point is we're going to imagine moving this point along the curve. So we're going to take this point P or point Q and we're going to imagine sliding it along the curve and let it get closer and closer to that point P. So we're just going to imagine moving that point Q along the curve and let it get closer to closer to point P. And what's going to happen is the, the secant line connecting the two points is going to adjust accordingly. So we're going to use a secant line and then we're going to let point Q move towards or approach our point P, the point that we're interested in. And so this idea of moving a point along a curve, well, we now have the language to talk about how to do that, and that's the idea of limits. So limits allow us to kind of see what happens as we start moving things around. And so once we get to this idea of moving point Q along the curve towards point P, we're starting to talk about limits. And so to kind of help see how this looks, let's let's look at a little animation. And here you see uh, point Q 
It's moving along the curve, getting closer and closer to point P. The, the secant line is adjusting accordingly each time. And what happens is that once Q gets really close to point P, we have our tangent line. So Q is just moving along the curve, getting closer and closer, and kind of the, the logical end of once Q gets really close, well, now we actually have our tangent line. And look at that. Our secant line is just getting closer and closer to the tangent line. And so it's that idea of moving that point Q along our curve. We're going to be doing a limit here. So let's see the actual definition of our derivative. And let's go back to our notes. All right, so like I said, we're, it's going to involve limits, but let's, let's actually see where this formula is going to come from. So this is, this is the actual definition of what the derivative actually is. So f prime of x, our derivative, and we've seen examples on how to calculate this with like our power rule. That's just to get a little practice, you know, working with, with derivatives. But what a derivative actually is, that's a different question. And that's what we're looking at here. So we're actually seeing here not a, a way, well, it is a way to calculate the derivative, but this is actually the definition for what the derivative actually is. You know, so you might be thinking, you know, what, what, what are we doing when we use the power rule and calculate a derivative? Well, it turns out this is how the derivative is defined. So it's going to be a limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. All right, there's a lot here. So let's, let's kind of look at what these, kind of this, the different pieces of this formula, um, where they come from. And so to help us with this, we're going to actually, if we remember, we have our secant line. And we're going to actually think about, well, what's the slope of that secant line? Let's actually calculate it. We know how to do this. So the Kind of what we did on the first day of class. So let's get our secant line connecting points. Um, well, not just the secant line. Let's get the slope. That's what we're interested in here, the slope of the secant line. And it's the line connecting points P and Q. And so we know what the slope formula is in general. If we have two points and we form the line connecting those two points, we know the slope for that line is just the change in y over the change in x. So it would be the y-coordinate of point Q minus the y-coordinate of point P divided by the x-coordinate of point Q minus the x-coordinate of point P. Just our regular slope formula. All right, so... Well, what are the actual value of these coordinates? And to help us with that, we're talking about a curve. So there's a function that describes our curve. So normally y equal to f of x. And so when we look at point P, when we look at point P, well, there's going to be an x value associated with that point. So let, we don't know what it is. And it depends on where we want our tangent line. So let's just keep that general and call it x. And so what that means is our coordinates for point P are going to be x comma f of x. And so the, the x-coordinate is just kind of the, the location here along the, the x-axis. And then the y-coordinate for our point, well, the y-coordinate is just our function value at x. All right, so that's point P. Now, what about point Q? What would be the coordinates for that? So as we've kind of drawn in this diagram here, point Q is going to be, you know, kind of close to point P. But in this case, it's slightly, slightly to the right. 
And so we can just say, again, you know, we don't know precisely here, but it's going to be if the x value for point P is x, if the x coordinate for point P is x, and point Q is just a little bit bigger, well, we could say the the coordinate for point Q here is going to happen at x plus a little bit extra. And we're going to use h to denote that little bit extra. So we're saying um, point Q is going to happen at x plus h. So it's going to be close to the x coordinate for point P, but just add on a little bit extra. And so what that means is Q is going to be x plus h, that's our x coordinate, comma f of x plus h. So there's our, there's our coordinates for points P and Q. And normally when we're talking about this, h is just going to be a small number because we want Q to be close to P. So h is usually just small. And so if we use these points to actually calculate our slope, let's just fill things in. The y-coordinate of point Q is this f of x plus h. The y-coordinate of point P is this f of x. So we're going to get f of x plus h minus f of x. And then our x-coordinate of point Q is x plus h. And then our x-coordinate of point P is just x, and we're subtracting. And if we simplify this down, the x here and the, the minus x here are going to cancel, and that's going to leave us with just this h. So we're going to have f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And a lot of times... We're going to call this gadget here the difference quotient. You know, not a lot of times, but sometimes. Okay. So let's go back to the definition. So we're saying that the derivative is equal to the limit as h goes to x or h goes to 0, of this difference quotient. And we know now that this difference quotient, this f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, well, that's actually the slope of our secant line. And we also know that f prime of x, the derivative, that's telling us the slope of our tangent line. And so what kind of where the magic happens, where this point Q approaches point P, where that is kind of uncovered it with the, it where that is kind of included in this definition is with this limit, this limit as h goes to 0. And so that's really what allows us to talk about point Q approaching point P. All right. So really how our derivative is defined. It's de defined to be the slope of the tangent line. And really what it is, is it's the slope of the secant line um, where we calculate then the limit as point Q approaches point P. And so this limit as H goes to zero is if, if H gets really small, if H goes to zero, well, we're adding on less and less. And so it's going to move closer this way. And so as, as this location shrinks, our point Q is going to move along the curve and get closer and closer to point P. All right, so that's going to be the setup here.
And what we're going to see next time is we're going to, or what we'll see in class, I guess, <laughs> is how to actually use this definition. So we'll see, we'll see how to use this definition to calculate the limit of uh, some polynomials and, oh, I don't know, maybe even a rational function. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.